Rheumatism is used to describe any disease marked by inflammation in the joints, muscles or fibrous tissue. So rheumatic fever is a type of inflammatory disease that can damage the heart tissue and lead to rheumatic heart disease. Rheumatic fever classically occurs a few weeks after an episode of group A streptococcal pharyngitis, which means inflammation of the pharynx, which is in the back of the throat. Some of these streptococcal bacteria have a protein on their cell wall called M protein, and this particular protein is highly antigenic, meaning that the immune system sees it and recognizes it as a foreign molecule and mounts an immune response, which rightfully so, produces antibodies against these proteins. Antibodies and CD4 plus T cells directed against streptococcal M proteins can also, in some cases, recognize cardiac self-antigens caused by molecular mimicry in the situations which bacterial M protein resembles proteins in human tissue. Damage to heart tissue may thus be caused by a combination of antibody and T cell mediated reactions. Rheumatic fever is characterized by a constellation of findings, the most common of which is migratory polyarthritis of the joints, in which one large joint after another becomes painful and swollen for a period of days and then subsides spontaneously, leaving no residual disability. Secondly, pancarditis, which means inflammation of the entire heart, the pericardium, myocardium and endocardium. Endocarditis is inflammation of the inner lining, which includes the valves. Valvular damage is the hallmark of rheumatic carditis. The mitral valve is almost always affected, sometimes together with the aortic valve. Isolated aortic valve involvement is rare. The next is myocarditis, inflammation of the myocardium or heart muscle. The myocardial inflammatory lesions, called ash of bodies, are pathognomonic for rheumatic fever. These are collections of lymphocytes primarily T-cells, scattered plasma cells and plum-activated macrophages called anichquo cells associated with zones of fibrinoid necrosis. The anichquo cells have abundant cytoplasm and nuclei with chromatin that is centrally condensed into a slender, wavy ribbon, so-called caterpillar cells. It turns out that myocarditis is the most common cause of death in acute rheumatic fever, because this inflammation and necrosis makes the heart wall unable to contract with full force, which results in heart failure. Finally, there's pericarditis, or inflammation of the outer covering of the heart, called the pericardium, which can cause pain as well as a friction rub from the inflamed visceral pericardium, rubbing against the inflamed parietal pericardium, which can be heard with a stethoscope. Patients can develop subcutaneous nodules, they might also have erythema marginatum, which is a skin rash that spreads on the trunk and limbs, as synonym chorea, a neurologic disorder with involuntary, rapid, purposeless movement. These five signs constitute the major diagnostic criteria for rheumatic fever, which are known as the Jones criteria. There are also some minor criteria that help make the diagnosis. Minor criteria are non-specific and include fever and elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate or ESR. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate is a type of blood test that measures how quickly erythrocytes settle at the bottom of a test tube that contains a blood sample. Normally, red blood cells settle relatively slowly. A faster than normal rate may indicate inflammation in the body. Acute attack usually resolves but may progress to chronic rheumatic heart disease. Chronic rheumatic heart disease is characterized by organization of acute inflammation and subsequent scarring. Ash of bodies are replaced by fibrous scar, so that these lesions are rarely seen in chronic disease. Most characteristically, valve cusps and leaflets become permanently thickened and retracted. Classically, the mitral valves exhibit leaflet thickening, commissural fusion and shortening. These changes can cause complications with the valves, most commonly regurgitation, meaning that they don't close all the way. Do not forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.